Hi everyone, uh, my name is Yolanda Boyser. I am currently 80% of my way through a Masters by Research under the supervision of Nicola Cannon and Felicity Crotty. And we're looking at the tillage impacts on soil health. So soil health is defined as um, a, a soil's ability to live up to its potential. And in this case, it would be the ecosystem services that provides. Soil not only provides food for us, but it's a way of um, regulating erosion, uh, water, carbon sequestration. Um, so it's a really vital resource in many aspects. And now we're really seeing that in order for it to be classed as healthy, we need to be ensuring that it's meeting all of those um, obligations that it has or those um, roles and responsibilities that it has. We're in a very unique place to do this. This is Harn Hill Quarry Farm, um, part of the RAU. It's been a, um, it's a crop that this, the crops were established 10 years ago uh, where they laid by complete random design. Um, different tillage types, which is the conventional tillage method, which is literally flipping the soil over. We have a minimal tillage, which is kind of like combing the soil. And then we also have the direct drills, which is where you pierce the soil with the seed. So we can really, and, so, and because soil stabilize after five years, this is a perfect opportunity to really assess what impact the tillage is having um, on all of the components that make up soil health. So soil health is made up of a chemical, physical and biological component. This research specifically looks at the biological component, but what also makes it unique is we're looking at all aspects because they all interplay with one another. Um, the biota need the environment, which forms the physical, but they also need the nutrient um, availability, which forms the chemical. So um, we've been doing this over, the sampling phase has been happening over the year. We did summer, autumn, winter, and now we're doing the spring round. Uh, today you're joining me for probably the most exciting part where I look at earthworms. I'm doing a diversity and abundance count of earthworms. And how we do it is we're using two methods. It's called the hand sorting method, as well as a must extraction method. So we'll pull a 20 square cube um, soil sample out of the ground. Um, I've laid it over here. What will then happen is we'll get our must extraction going and as you can see I mean this is actually once again an amendment of traditional uh, methods used usually mustard extraction would be put on top of the soil um, uh, but we're extracting it and then laying the, the mustard extraction because we're looking for the deep burrowers these are the, the highly valued um, earthworms because not all earthworms are equal and these are the guys that kind of create vertical burrows um, they're not only creating aeration they're creating like urban hot spots within the soil where other organisms congregate uh, but they're also taking carbon sources from the top of the, uh, the, the the soil layer and they're bringing it right down up to a couple of meters sometimes so we want to get those guys to see how many of them are here so here's our sam soil sample that we've extracted because we're doing quite a few methods, I'm multitasking. So as you can see, I've got my temperature gauge going here. I want to know what the temperature of the soil is. Here I'm doing a visual assessment of my soil profile. So I want to kind of know um, the physical um, composition of the soil. I'm looking at the organic content, um, but specifically I'm looking at how crumbly my soil is. Now we've had a lot of um, dry weather. Um, we're really short of rain at the minute. So as you can see, um, we have very kind of solid soil. So I'm worried that I'm not going to find that many um, earthworms. But then what I'll start doing is I'll just start breaking this apart and I'll try and find uh, those earthworms. Um, three types of earthworms in this type of soil. We'll have our um, horizontal burrows. So those are the guys who kind of transporting nutrients from one place to another. Um, they're known as R strategists, so they lots in numbers, short lifestyles, and minimally affected by tillage. Whereas your deep burrowers, those are K strategists, um, they have up to 10 years life cycles. Um, they're big and fat uh, worms like this, so they're very vulnerable um, to us cultivating the land. But these are the guys that are bringing the most value to our land. So, as I said, 80% of the way through, um, 
very exciting results so far. Not only are we finding that there is significant differences between the tillage types, we're finding that there's differences in when you take those measurements, so in the cycle, um, in the year, as well as how you take those measurements. So we're also playing around with the methods um, and we're finding some interesting results there. So um, follow us and see how it all goes. I'm really excited um, to be able to publish these results. Um, from here on, I'll be following on to a PhD um, where we'll be looking at how soil health correlates to plant health. So not all plants are equal and how much nutrition are our plants really extracting based on the soil type that they're growing on. Thank you.